The Alliance for Child Protection in Humanitarian Action is the global interagency network that promotes the protection and well-being of children in humanitarian settings. This video is part of a series exploring the minimum standards for child protection in humanitarian action, or the CPMS. As part of the Humanitarian Standards Partnership, this set of 10 principles, 28 standards and accompanying guidance is key for all humanitarians as we work to fulfill our duties toward children. In this video, we look at Pillar 4, the standards to work across sectors. Millions of children are facing increasingly complex humanitarian crises. Helping them cope and recover takes a wide range of support, including specialized child protection interventions. But no single sector has all the knowledge, skills and resources to fully prevent risks, respond to children's rights to be protected from violence, abuse, exploitation and neglect, and promote their well-being. Children are, are whole beings. They're not uh, they're not sectors, right? They don't divide their lives up in sectors. And so we we know that, you know, if you're trying to assist someone who's been impacted by a humanitarian crisis, uh, particularly children, you really need to think holistically. By taking a holistic and multi-sectoral approach, we can achieve not only our collective responsibility to uphold the centrality of protection but also build stronger, more effective programs that improve outcomes for every child. Because of the interconnectedness of children's needs, all humanitarian actors have the responsibility and the role to play in contributing to the protection of the affected children, as well as their caregivers and the community. To help do this, CPMS Pillar 4 has been developed to provide standards and guidance on working across sectors to prevent and respond to the protection risks children face. Pillar four of the child protection uh, minimum standards is, is a really critical one. Um, if, we, if we don't think across sectors, if we don't look to find complementarity and integration of our work, it really does leave us likely not doing as much as we could. And sometimes even perhaps doing some things wrong that, that have a, a negative impact on, on the people we're trying to help. By intentionally addressing children's protection needs through a multi-sectoral approach, we can use the strengths of each sector to help ensure positive outcomes for children, more efficient use of resources, and holistic solutions that are more likely to meet the needs of children and communities. To ensure this child goes to school as well as have something to eat, which is nutritious, which also supports in their growth and development. We need to work together. And working together means we will be improving the outcomes of other sectors. In ways that we can, we can bring together child protection with, with the work of other sectors and, and, and find some complementarity and coordination there really can make a difference. It, it's certainly going to lead to more efficient use of resources. Uh, it, it will very likely help us to avoid doing any harm inadvertently. And hopefully it will actually have more impact, positive impact, uh, both in terms of the child protection work and whatever other sectors are involved. Working together can take different shapes depending on the context. These include mainstreaming the protection of children, joint programming, and integrated programming. Mainstreaming occurs when a sector integrates child protection principles into its work and promotes the meaningful access, safety, and dignity of children. For example, when WASH programs consider the age, gender and abilities of children in the design of water and sanitation facilities and the promotion of menstrual hygiene management, this is mainstreaming. It is one example of placing children at the center of a sector's response and considering their needs through all phases of the program cycle. Another example of mainstreaming is creating age-appropriate feedback mechanisms to shape our work, such as governance in a camp. If we have a good coordination between the different sectors, it permits to get more inclusive response, where children concerns can be listened and then included on, on the type of work that we will provide. 
So for example, for camp management, which is one of our activities, but then we try to create governance structures at camp level or in even informal sites where all the members in the camps are represented. Joint programming allows each sector to maintain its own objectives while jointly planning and implementing certain aspects of their programs. For example, child protection, health and camp management staff might work together to develop standard operating procedures for identifying and referring children at risk and developing planned responses to each of these referrals. Infectious disease outbreaks such as COVID-19 present many such challenges that call for a joint programming approach. We had a girl living in an IDP camp that was confined with having uh, COVID-19 while uh, the family, the other members, weren't positive. This uh, raised the alert for the activation of our SOPs and the procedure that we follow is that the girl was accompanied through all the process for her recovery with um, an adult member of the family. And lastly, integrated programming starts with a common, holistic understanding of child well-being and involves collective planning that draws on the strengths and resources of each sector. In a humanitarian crisis, some of the most vulnerable people may be children who have been separated from their families or who are at risk of recruitment into armed groups and forces. Driven by our common humanitarian goals, an integrated program could blend cash grants, livelihood support, education, and family strengthening interventions to effectively address the root causes of these risks. In Venezuela, humanitarian agencies have used an integrated programming approach to achieve collective, positive outcomes for children. They have deliberately worked across sectors to develop joint assessment, goal setting, planning, program implementation, and monitoring. Either Venezuelans who'd come to Colombia or else Colombians who'd returned from Venezuela, where they had lived for many years, they were often settling in a peri-urban slum areas with a lot of services. Obviously, at times, lots of violence and, and protection risks were also present. And so there, uh, for example, in the areas around Cucuta, which is what is the main crossing for Venezuelans into Colombia, we were working to, to integrate our livelihood support program with child protection work. And we made sure that the child protection work impacted a lot of children in the community. Whether we are mainstreaming, carrying out joint programming, or an integrated response, the imperative to protect children lies at the heart of all humanitarian action. Evidence shows us that centering responses on children's rights to protection from the beginning of every humanitarian crisis can make the work of each sector more effective, improving the quality and reach of programs and making them more cost-efficient. And it is a pivotal investment in the future health and well-being of fragile and conflict-affected societies. Although each sector might use different language to talk about what we are trying to achieve, starting with a dialogue and using the CPMS with other sector-specific standards can help us see where to begin. For children to be able to go to school, there is need for them to learn in a safe environment. There is need for them to be able to access the schools and receive the teaching or learning they require. If there are risk, for instance, along the way, like risk of landmines, uh, like risk of uh, children being abducted along the school, children will not be able to receive the services and even not be able to reach to school. And therefore, it is important that many times education and child protection works together. As local organizations or international agencies, strengthening our ways of working across sectors and using tools such as the minimum standards for child protection in humanitarian action can help us build a safer world for every child. So it's really important that we, we, we bring this integration lens uh, to our work and um, I really want to encourage you to do so. You know, it, it takes a little bit of thinking. It takes a bit of time, maybe a bit of reading, but it, it really will in the end um, give us a, a much better result than working in our, our silos. Protecting children lies at the heart of humanitarian action.